to re-sign Scott Wells. I'm fine with giving Jermichael Finley the franchise tag. He's been disappointing. If he had good reception numbers, he was third on the team, but if he had as many targets as he had, he could have had a lot more receptions. Uh, Scott Wells has been the most consistent player on the Packers offensive line. I think it's vital that Ted Thompson re-signs him, brings back that continuity between him and Rodgers. I was thinking uh, another choice they could go, actually, this is back to the draft talk, was a uh, local boy, Peter Kahns, I believe, oh, yeah. out of Wisconsin. And there's backups in the NFL from, uh, or there's backups from Wisconsin that start now in the NFL. I mean, they just got a good line, and I'd feel, I'd feel great about that. Yeah. <laughs> another another thing like about uh, losing Flynn is the Packers could also try to replace him. They have got Graham Harrell, but there's some quarterbacks that I think might drop to the fourth, fifth, and sixth rounds that Ted Thompson wouldn't be afraid to take. Nick Foles out of Arizona, Kirk Cousins possibly out of Michigan State, and Kellen Moore out of Boise State. Somebody they could hide away on the practice squad, see what he could do after a few years. You'd like to have quarterbacks, especially Mike McCarthy. He's a big quarterback guy, so... I think we're going to see Flynn leave. I'll be really interested to see if they franchise tag Finley or try to sign him to an extension. I think they're going to test the waters with him and just do the franchise tag and see how he works out next year. And like you were saying, late rounds, Flynn was a seventh rounder himself, so mm -hmm. you never know. Absolutely. So there is uh, a lot more we can get at here with, with Green Bay as well. I mean, when you look at some guys that have their contracts, they're in the middle towards the end of them. Aaron Rodgers, it's time to start thinking about taking care of him one more time. He's got mm -hmm. two years left. Greg Jennings, it's almost time to give him an extension. And also Clay Matthews. You know, the, the core talent of this team is up for extensions, and they're going to be a little pricey. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a good first segment, guys. We're going to actually take a quick break right now. We're going to send you to a quick look at what all UWL has to offer. Movies, glitz, glamour. These words are easily associated with one place, Hollywood. Hollywood has come to symbolize cinema in the United States, but why? Hollywood in the year 1900 was only one tiny village. How did it end up as the movie capital of the world? The answer is simple, the weather. Back in the early days of cinema, cameras were rudimentary at best. They only operated well in places with plenty of light because the early black and white cameras had a hard time distinguishing between subjects. Movies usually had to be shot outside. Even interior sets were often open air to let the sun provide free light. Filmmakers had to find a place that would be sunny regularly enough so they could work uninterrupted. In 1910, a director named D.W. Griffith headed to the California coast and found the then sleepy town of Hollywood. He set up shop and started cranking out productions. Only a year later, in 1911, the first studio was set up in the town, and by 1920, Southern California was the center of the U.S. film industry. Welcome back into Sports Talk Live. We're going to try out a little bit of a new game here in this segment, and the game is called Love It <laughs> or Leave It. We're going to start out with everyone's favorite new sensation, Jeremy Lin of the New York Knicks. Of course, huge media darling right now. His play is backing it up, though. He has yet to tail off after uh, eight games, eight or nine games here. The hype around Jeremy Lin, do you guys love it or do you leave it? Jeremy Lin, absolutely love it. I am a Division three football player, no scholarships. He went to Harvard, no scholarships there. He's working his way up. He has been through it all, and he's the most humble guy I know. Heard a quote today. He said, I just know you can fall just as quickly as you can rise. So he's very humble. I know Jeremy Lin is fantastic with his uh, humbleness and everything, but I'm, I'm leaving it because I don't think he can keep this up. I think there's a lot of problems with his left-hand game, and then we saw the other night when he couldn't actually defend Darren, Darren Williams, and he shot uh, eight three-pointers on him. He's only got 24 points per game uh, in his career, which is pretty good, but there's other numbers, 46% uh, in his career field goals. Uh, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, Kevin Durant, these big-name players are all putting up these numbers and better, and I don't think he can outlast. Okay, I, I, I'm loving Jeremy Lin. I'm kind of leaving the hype. The bottom line is he's not Derrick Rose, Chris Paul, or Steve Nash, but I think he fits in line with most other point guards in that middle tier. I think we can see now he's got the abilities to play, so good for him in his spot. Moving on now to Kobe Bryant. He was outwardly unhappy with management in a post-game press conference after a game against the Trailblazers. What do you guys feel about Kobe Bryant here, now arguably one of the best players of his generation, one of the better Lakers of all time? 
Is it a good thing or a bad thing? Are you loving or leaving him calling out management to the public? I absolutely love it. Kobe is the epitome of the just do everything to win type of player. He will call out the organization because, I mean, if you look at it from Gasol's point of view, which I think Kobe is, uh, he's showing up to games. He just doesn't even know if he's supposed to, like, where he's going to be the next day. All of a sudden, he could be somewhere else. So Kobe's saying, get our team chemistry at work and make a move if you have to make a move. I like that he's calling out the team, but I don't like that he did it publicly. Mm -hmm. You should call out management, call out your team in private meetings, which he actually did set up. I was watching ESPN today. He set up a private meeting, and him and Gasol were talking and uh, trying to encourage the players. So I like the private. I don't like the public. Public. Yeah, I think, uh, I think Kobe is the only person who could pull that off, that's for sure. But now uh, a little bit more in the NBA. We're going to go to the midpoint. Who do you guys love? At the midpoint, and who do you think is just going to fall off coming up soon here? I got the Bulls and the Heat in the East that I'm loving. Obviously, the Bulls, Derrick Rose is healthy now, and he is fantastic. He's heating it up. Who do I hate or I'm leaving? Uh, maybe the Clippers. Maybe the Clippers are too much hype. You know, they had those acquisitions in, uh, in the offseason, and Blake Griffin is dunking every left and right, but can they win the games down the stretch? All right, yeah, I, I like what you're saying there, John. I'm going to go with the Eastern Conference. The team I'm loving is the Miami Heat. I think they are uh, got a pretty good chance to make it back to the NBA Finals this year. Uh, LeBron James is having another MVP-type season, and Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh are helping him out just like before. Uh, in terms of some teams I'm leaving, I'm, I'm starting to leave the Philadelphia 76ers. They've been mm -hmm. on a little bit of a run here, but they're starting to falter. Uh, but the bottom line is the Eastern Conference is loaded. I mean, this is going to be a tough conference to get out of. The Knicks are all of a sudden on the rise now, yeah. looking tough. So the East is going to be a very fun ride. In the West, I'm loving Oklahoma City. Uh, right now, Durant and Russell Westbrook are playing a lot better together. Westbrook's being a little bit less selfish. They've also got James Harden, Kendrick Perkins playing better than last year. And they're, they're looking good. So I'm loving Oklahoma City. What about yeah, you, Ben? Real right, quick. right on board with you with both the Heat and Oklahoma City. So. Absolutely. Now switching from the hardwood to the baseball diamond, pitchers and catchers reported this past weekend. We're going to focus in right now on the Milwaukee Brewers. A lot of changes. Fielder's gone. Braun may be facing a 50-game suspension. Do you guys love this Brewers team, or are you leaving this Brewers team in terms of success this season? I'm going to say in terms of success this season, I'm going to love the Brewers because I feel like they've always gone for like offensive explosiveness. And I think it's you, you do a lot better when you have a solid pitching rotation and defense than relying on all your guys to have a good hitting day. Uh, as far as hating it, though, I hate their strategy of always dumping off young prospects for that one good pitcher. I feel like that's starting to backfire, and we need to stop using that strategy. So, I'm leaving the Brewers. There's too many questions right now with the Braun drug appeal, and obviously Fielder leaving. We have questions at first base, questions in the left field. Uh, we're going to have to have someone named Norichika Aoka come up from Japan. Aoki! Names like that. I mean, how, how are you going to be successful with all these questions and this big cloud over their head? Okay, Aoki, he's a little concerning, but he was a batting champion in Japan. It's just, can that, can that translate? Is he Ichiro or is he a flash in the pan? We'll see. Uh, you know, you bring in Aramis Ramirez uh, to try to replace some of the numbers of Fielder. Biggest question for me is the middle relief there with the Brewers, but as of right now, especially with the Cardinals losing Pujols and La Russa, I'm loving the Brewers' chances at making another run here to win the division. Another topic of concern right now for the Milwaukee Brewers is two pitchers, Sean Markham and Zach Greinke, are both up for free agency after this season. So, which pitcher are you guys loving to re-sign if you're the Milwaukee Brewers, and which pitcher are you leaving? Uh, I think you have to love to re-sign Greinke. Um, as we've talked about before, he doesn't love the huge markets. He loves the mid-markets, and Milwaukee is right there with him. He was in Kansas City before, same concept. And I think that if uh, like the Yankees or someone like that isn't going to steal him away, then you have to make a good uh, run at him. So I'm loving Greinke also because Markham was uh, unreliable in the postseason. And uh, that's yours now. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm thinking uh, you got to keep Granky. You gave up a lot more to get Granky, and I'm looking at it this way. He, he wants to stay in a small market with his anxiety issues, so if you lose him to another team with the same size wallet as you, it's going to be a little deflating. So I think you try to go after Granky.